Okay, hello everyone once again and welcome to Teltonica webinar in which we will present uh, new possibilities in the custom scenarios feature. My name is Guada and I'm operational marketing coordinator. Today I will be guiding you through our topic. Uh, together with me today is my colleague Ira Dostoshenka, who is a projects coordinator and Ira Dost will be handling your questions during the Q&A session. So use this opportunity to get answers from our experts by leaving your questions in the Q&A tab. Q&A tab can be found below on the Zoom screen. And uh, please note that this session is being recorded and the replay version will be available on our website and YouTube channel after a few days after the webinar. Okay, let's begin. So, our agenda for today is the following. Uh, we will introduce what is Custom Scenarios feature. Then we will present how it works, including success stories from our clients who have already implemented Custom Scenarios. Learn how part uh, will demonstrate what steps needs to be taken to configure our scenarios. So, we'll ask Irudas to help me there. And finally, we will have a Q&A session. So where we will answer all of your questions. So once again, I encourage you to write your questions in the Q&A tab. Before diving into how this new feature works and its exciting capabilities, um, I want to take a moment to explain why we developed it. Um, every new feature we create uh, starts with a clear purpose in mind. For example, to solve real challenges, enhance the user experience, and provide value. In this case, uh, we identified several key areas that needed improvement. So basically, we noticed that many clients have unique custom requests that they need for their fleets that couldn't be addressed through standard features, requiring us to make individual term changes, which of course uh, takes us a little bit of time and stops our clients from uh, releasing these needed custom features sooner. And now, with this custom scenarios feature, our clients can implement their specific solutions on their own using Teltonica Configurator and do it much faster. Do not take any more minute and uh, let's talk how it works. So using Teltonica Configurator, you can set up up to three different or identical scenarios on one device. Each scenario can be configured with three different sources. Each source corresponds to OBD, CAN or IO elements. For example, the number of DTC, movement, ignition or other sources the client chooses. If scenario runs independently according to configure sources. And as mentioned before, configurable conditions can be set according to parameters such as fuel level, engine RPM, seatbelt status, DTC fault status of device movement, ignition status, GSM signal level, one wire or Bluetooth sensor readings, and of course a lot of others depending on the device. Uh, now, we can see how it looks like in our configurator. Just to begin with, uh, let's continue with that live uh, walkthrough of custom scenarios uh, configuration, where I can show you how we can tailor the settings uh, according to your specific needs. Please consider that this configuration version uh, that is currently uh, used for display is unique for custom scenarios firmware branch. So only in this configurator version, you will be able to find the custom scenarios section where the whole functionality is configured. Um, as a primary example, let's consider a use case uh, where we want to inform driver directly in case the temperature drops in the refrigerating unit. So, uh, Output control allows to select which of device out digital outputs should be controlled by specific scenario when the conditions are met. Uh, further, priority allows to configure uh, if a separate eventual record should be generated once conditions are met. Additional note that another eventual record will be also created after conditions of this scenario are no longer met. 
Not the most important advantage, however, still a viable option uh, for devices that do not have a digital output or simply when we are choosing not to connect the device to any external accessories, we can still use this feature to create unique notifications if several element values enter the threshold without the need of adjusting from server side. Uh, so, we can also consider using Priority None uh, to disable overall eventual record generation and keep it only for the digital output control. Other priority uh, options follow the same logic as standard features, so low, uh, enabled event generation, records will be sent after the time uh, send period elapses, high, this will mean that records are sent immediately without waiting for that send period to elapse, Panic, uh, used in rare occasions, uh, in edge cases, when we want to still inform the end user that event happened, if, even if our device could not connect to GPS uh, uh, network. Uh, in such a situation, data would be sent via SMS to SMS Center using a binary format. Uh, to continue on, uh, we have options to uh, and, uh, turn on the digital output on and off according to specific duration. In case uh, we do not want to turn our digital output on and off uh, uh, and we want to continuously uh, uh, control the digital output, we can simply use output duration as zero and for example uh, set 30,000 milliseconds which would in turn be 30 seconds. Uh, now uh, I'm reverting to uh, previous settings, so uh, let's move on with the example I previously mentioned. So uh, for condition one, we're selecting Bluetooth temperature uh, one. Uh, choosing operand on acted uh, to define that condition should be meant when we acted specific range. The range itself is defined with high level and low level parameters. So if we want to set up 33 degrees as high level and 17 degrees as uh, low level, we should use an example configuration. Note that uh, for this we are using a uh, uh, specific multiplier, therefore the values are higher than fold. Additionally, uh, uh, once we describe uh, and define the range uh, for temperature, we can additionally add a filter. So if we want to filter out some small jumps in temperature, the temperature value being close to the range for some time, we can use activation delay timer and set it for example 60 seconds. Moving further on, as we see, we, we can use uh, another condition and in order to custom scenario one to take it into account, we should uh, uh, set ignore uh, parameters uh, value to none. This means that both of these conditions are taken into account. Additionally, we added a logic uh, uh, selection for AND and OR. So if we want that uh, this custom scenario would be uh, true uh, when both uh, conditions are met, we should select logic AND. Else, if uh, we are using or uh, if any of those thresholds are met, the conditions, uh, the custom scenario conditions will be met and it will be enabled. So, uh, for the previously defined example, informing the driver, uh, we can select ignition, uh, status is, select high and low values, and therefore, after configuring all of this, this custom scenario would work like this. We uh, monitor if vehicle is uh, active, so vehicle ignition is on, value 1, and if the temperature is out of range, for example lower than uh, 17 degrees or 60 seconds, only then digital output would be started to be in control, turning on every 5 seconds on and off. Uh, I won't continue on this uh, in order to uh, make sure that uh, the, it is clear uh, how priorities between those three different scenarios work. So I will also cover another example. 
let's consider in uh for example driver identification logic where we can have different stages of notifications via LEDs and in the end of the cycle we want to enable alarm uh, if other uh, if such is connected to for example to a buzzer so in similar fashion i have already uh, pre-configured conditions for the custom scenario tree uh, selecting the digital output which would which would be connected to the led and then uh, uh, add activation delay timer of 60 seconds then uh, moving on for the second scenario we would configure same conditions however now adding 120 seconds for uh, delay and also changing the the time period of digital output uh, activation period so we could identify for the driver uh, that the authorization time is going to end soon then moving on further we can uh, select the stage uh, uh, three so selecting different digital output would, which would be co connected to a buzzer uh, enable it so it would be controlled permanently for like 50 seconds and then select same conditions as uh, before so i button is not detected ignition is on however this time for 118 seconds and uh, in, in the end, the scenario would work like this. So uh, after 60 seconds of no identification, uh, digital output turns on every five seconds. After another 60 seconds, custom scenario two takes over, uh, blinking more frequently. And in the end, uh, the custom scenario one would kick in and control the digital output permanently for 50 seconds. Now I would like to highlight capabilities that were mentioned by Iridas one more time. So, um, firstly, with this custom scenarios, each element can be configured and operate independently from what is set in the IO section. Secondly, it allows us to use both AND or OR logic. This means we can set up uh, scenarios that trigger if any of several conditions are met, not just all of them. Additionally, it has a delay timer function it was, as, well, as it was presented by Aridas. That means that you can specify a delay so the doubt only activates after conditions have been met for a certain amount of time. Furthermore, Custom Scenarios gives us the option to either keep doubt on continuously or to switch it on and off at set intervals. And finally, if a digital output is configured for a critical function like an immobilizer or eco-driving, you typically cannot control it remotely. However, with, with the setgout command, we can manually override this and take control when necessary. If we later want the system to resume automatic control, we can simply use the clear the gout prior command. Now allow me to present some of the real and tested examples from, in, from different industries and uh, from clients that already proved these custom scenarios. Let's start by exploring how our custom solution addresses a key challenge for our customers in the logistics industry, transporting food while maintaining optimal temperatures in the refrigerated trailers. Uh, I believe the, the ones who came today from logistics industry would agree with me that one of the major difficulties is ensuring that products stay fresh during transportation. To solve this, we implemented the FMM 130 device, which is mounted in the trailer, not in the furrow head, and paired with Bluetooth low energy temperature sensors. The FMM 130 is uh, powered by a 12 volt battery that is continuously recharged by a solar panel, ensuring the system remains operational even when the trailer is stationary and disconnected from a vehicle. We have two temperature sensors installed, one outside and one outside the trailer, to constantly monitor temperature conditions and send data to the FMM 130. 
If the system detects that the temperature goes beyond the set limits, the FMM-130 triggers the fan to, to turn on or off, ensuring the products remain at the right temperature. Additionally, a door sensor tracks when the trailer doors are open or closed, sending immediate updates to the server. In this case, additionally, real-time events allows us to prevent from food spoilage during transportation events. If the refrigerator unit has a problem, the driver gets an alert right away. Uh, this way, drivers can take action quickly and move food to the nearest warehouse if needed, reducing any delays and keeping the product safe. Moreover, in case if this issue appears uh, and we have food spoilage, our system can exactly show when and in which trailer the incident occurred. This traceability allows for swift identification of whether the issue is due to a real problem with the transportation or another factors lead us to this issue. Continuing with success stories, um, custom scenarios can also be used to enhance driver safety. Our clients operating in fleet management needed a seat belt alarm with a delay timer. It might sound interesting, but keep in mind that not all of the vehicles have this feature by default. A delayed alarm was set to start 10 seconds after ignition was on and if the seatbelt is not fastened. This solution offers several benefits, enhancing the overall driving experience with a more reliable and less intrusive alarm system. Additionally, it eliminates the need for extensive rewiring, saving both time and resources during implementation. Furthermore, a custom scenario has been implemented to enhance fuel theft detection. If the ignition is off and the fuel level drops an amount of fuel that was configured by the user, the digital output, which is connected to the buzzer, is triggered and a notification is immediately sent to the driver. This ensures that users is alerted in the real time whenever the fuel loss occurs, even when the vehicle ignition is turned off. In this case, the fuel level is measured using FMC 130 device and fuel level sensors, uh, while the notification uh, is sent to users to, via buzzer alert. We have several benefits here, so real-time notifications of fuel level drops even then the vehicle is not in use, increases security to prevent uh, hell from fuel theft, and of course there is no need for ignition to be on, so we are expanding theft monitoring capabilities. This solution is also available when reading CAN data using accessories such as CAN adapter or other devices with an external CAN chip. However, please note that the ability to retrieve your data while the vehicle's ECU is in sleep mode will depend on the specific vehicle mode. As we're coming to the end, and we are, let's take a moment to wrap up and uh, highlight the key benefits of FMB devices custom scenarios. Enhanced fleet safety. The custom scenarios allows customers to implement advanced security measures. Flexible and independent configuration, each scenario can be configured independently, allowing customers to tailor the system to their specific needs. Delayed activation. With introduction, introduction of a delay timer, customers can ensure that specific actions only occur after conditions have been met for a specified duration driver safety, and behavior management. Custom scenarios like overspeeding detection helps customers to enhance driver safety and manage fleet behavior more effectively. This is especially valuable for logistics companies and insurance telematics where safety, compliance, and efficiency are critical. Customized alerts and actions. This ensures that timely responses to important events and enhances operational efficiency. Here you can see just the several devices that supports custom scenarios feature at this moment. 
If you need information, if your Teltonica FMB device supports this feature or when it will be available, please contact Teltonica sales managers for the latest status update. Thank you for joining. That concludes our webinar. I hope it was useful. You hear something new and uh, take care and goodbye for now.